What's happening guys, you're here with Nate, this is Crossbeats Production, and thank you for tuning into the channel. I want to go through this Logic X tutorial, it's to do with the step sequencer and sampling and basically just using your drum kit as the step sequencer inside of Logic. This is a kind of neat thing because it really did help me to build this track and I wanted to share with you guys how I did that because it just really came together quite well. So without further ado, have a listen to the track, I'll show you what that sounds like and then I'll take you through how I did this. Let's go. Now you know I got it in that park, you see that artwork, where you really get it? Can I go Why you won't? Don't tell me you can't drop this, I'm speaking that word. Now you know I won't stop this, I'll be preaching what the Holy Bible say. I'll be preaching what the Holy Bible say. Now you know I don't stop what I say, don't. Alright, so that's the basis of it. I won't play the whole thing, but um, that's kind of the lay down yet so far of what I've got. This is a demo in progress. Uh, so I want to show you how I designed the drums around this beat. Uh, pretty much started with the beat, just purely with the drums, and then I created the rest around that. I don't always do that, but that seemed to be the case with this beat. So I just figured I'd show you how I did that. So uh, with the drum designer, so it's a drum machine designer. Uh, you can see here if I click on that. So it says drum machine designer. How I got that into the project was by hitting the plus the software instrument area comes up, it's an empty channel strip, so I just hit create, and that allows that to then load up here, and then you can see here, this is what I'm working with, so I'll just label that drums, um, and just keep it simple. So to get the thing to look like this, uh, you basically have to then go down to the area here where the channel strip is, and then click on instrument, scroll down to this part here where it says drum machine designer, hit that, and then it'll bring up the basically the drum design, <laughs> the drum machine designer. And this is where you can add your samples in or you can take from this section here. So if I wanted to add in some samples uh, externally, I've got some samples here that I like. So I'll just go with my kick. Uh, I'll just move it out of the way actually first before I do that. Uh, so let me just drag across the kick. I've got a hi-hat and hi-hat and then a clap. And we'll throw them there. All right, so you can see it's loaded up every single sample and you can play these out just by hitting that little symbol there. So that allowed me to get my samples in. I'll close that. And I mean, as I said, you can use the ones that come with this. There's plenty of good samples inside of Logic. So if you uh, don't have any external stuff, that's definitely an option there. Um, I'll probably design a kit where I've got some of my stuff as well. But for now, I'm, I'm working on that right now. I don't want to release anything yet until it's finished. But this is a, the uh, the drum mas machine designer. So it's allowing the, the drum kit. So it's creating a drum kit for you. It shows you the key. So this is the input key. That's where it's going to on the keyboard. And then you can obviously mess around with the envelopes and stuff like that by hitting follow tempo. Uh, you can do a whole lot of stuff using this. It's got the sample details here. So you can go in there and really mess with it a bit if you wanted to. But my kit sounds pretty good how I like it and I don't need to do that. So that's it pretty much from there. You've got the drum kit laid out on these 16 pads. You've got several windows of that so you can keep going with whatever you want uh, from there. But I don't need that many on this one. So from there you create this section here. So go create a pattern region. So once you hit create pattern region, that will bring up the step sequencer. Now this is where it gets fun because obviously you're designing your, your kit um, I'm going to show you what I've got on mine, but I went to here. So you go down from 12, 16, 24, whatever. Um, I usually use 64 steps because I'd like to have more steps, which creates more variation in the track. And because I'm using such a basic kit, that means that I want to really make it variate. Like I want a variation to my sound as much as possible with the sounds that I've got. Uh, so again, you, you know, just drawing your stuff there. And that's where you, you know, create your kit. Uh, I'll show you exactly what I did. So I'm going to delete this so because I don't need it anymore. So I've got my, my whole layout here and I've got my sounds. If you click on these little symbols, it actually plays the sound for you as well. So just so you're aware of that. The cool thing about this though is if you go to this little tab here and you highlight that and I'll just scroll down a bit. So I've got a lot going on with the hi-hats uh, because they're the things that are really creating that kind of rhythm in the track. And the things that are happening here is velocity. So I've got velocity one, I've got note repeaters, another one, 
and then I've got a gate. So if you click on that, obviously you've got all these options to choose from, but these are the ones that I'm using on this. So I'm using a gate to kind of gate this a little bit. I'm doing a note repeat on here and you can variation, you can have a variation up to like 16 if you wanted to, uh, but I have three on that one. And on this part then I've got chance, which just tells you tells the note if it's gonna be a chance of what percentage that you wanna create. So I've got a low percentage that's gonna hit that. Um, so it kind of creates a variation as it goes on the fly. Uh, if you wanted to though, if you wanna change up, just for example, I'll just move this all back here. Now, if I'd, I duplicated that, that actually creates a, a new pattern of the same pattern. But the thing is with the same pattern, you can actually take out the kick or you can take out the, the you know, different things in here. So the, the clap, for example, I could take that out. So it kind of just creates like a dif different kind of rhythm inside of the track. And it really does help just change things up a bit, you know. So if you wanted to just mess around with your drum kit and have different patterns on different areas, you could do that and then separate them out. Um, and that just really just gives you more of a authentic sort of sound to your, your tracks as well. So what I would do from this point forward, if I was just wanting to stick with the, the basic pattern and start creating, which is exactly what I did in this song, I didn't actually go and change stuff until maybe later I will, but for now I haven't. Um, so from that point forward, you can separate these by converting them to MIDI. So you hit convert to MIDI. And then if I double click that, you'll see that it's now all converted to MIDI. It's on the normal grid pattern as you would see normally. That's extended out as long as the uh, the pattern here is. And then from there, if I want to separate it so it's all on its own individual track, I just right click again and then go down to this MIDI thing and go separate by note pitch. And then you can see here what it's done. It's just separated everything individually. I can just draw again, same thing again if I want to. Um, but that allows you then to really get into the, the whole MIDI and manipulate pitch and things like that if you want to on the individual MIDI tracks and just change up things even further if you wanted to. But if you're happy with how it is, there you go. I mean, that lays it out. It's it's obviously then at that point, you could then bounce it out as a stem individually um, and work from there, you you know, bounce in place and all that sort of stuff. You've got that available to you if you know what logic works like. But this is kind of just a, a really handy kind of tip to uh, to work in your drums quite quickly, get a pattern that you like, and then start building around that if you wanted that as your foundation. But I mean, it doesn't have to be drums first. I usually start with melodies first, but for whatever reason, this this worked with drums and I really uh, I really got to where I wanted to be quite quickly with that. So hopefully this tutorial is of benefit to you. If it is, remember to like, subscribe, and uh, make your notifications down below of what you want to see on this uh, channel in the description box below, I should say. And uh, of course, I'll see you on the next one and peace out.